Never judge a book by its cover. Not even if the cover depicts a sharp-toothed, gaping maw. However, you should exercise extreme caution if that gaping maw is wet, warm, and breathing. Welcome to the Literary Lair. Hello, listeners, and welcome back to the show. As you can see, there are some changes. All that needs to be said is that I am currently being monitored by the YouTube secret police. Due to constant infringements, they claim I have made against their content ID system. But before I go into detail about the exact circumstances of my infractions, I want to talk to you about a book. Tie-in novels for popular franchises are pretty well known. Even if in today's fast-paced electronic world, they don't seem to be as prevalent. Some franchises will still depict the adventures of their characters through literature as well as through the screen. One of those such franchises is a podcast about a sleepy desert community. Welcome to Night Vale, if you haven't heard of it, and come on, who hasn't heard of it by now, is a podcast created by Joseph Fink and Jeffrey Craner, and is known for its surrealist paranormal horror elements that are explained to us by the host of the show, Cecil Palmer, voiced by Cecil Baldwin. And isn't that ridiculous, the host of a show having the same name as the actor who plays him? Who would do such a thing? As of the recording of this episode, the podcast has been running for nearly as long as this show, having debuted in June of 2012. And yet, this podcast is vastly more popular than this show. But I'm not bitter about it. The podcast consists of stories, anecdotes, and advertisements from the town of Nightvale, and reports of the various goings-on in town regarding the townspeople. With the podcast being a rousing success, it's no surprise that they would branch out into live shows, merchandise, and yes, even books. The cover of the book is great. It's exactly what you would assume that a Night Vale book's cover would look like, though I will say there are significantly less tentacles than I had guessed. It's purple with a desert in the background, in the style of the Night Vale logo, with the mesas, not mountains because they do not exist, the water tower, and of course, a radio tower. In the middle of the cover is the Night Vale Moon Eye, which is emitting white lines all over the cover. The title is emblazoned near the top, and we see that it was written by Joseph Fink and Jeffrey Craner, and is based on the number one international hit podcast, and according to NPR.org, is a splendid, weird, moving novel. Though I would like to warn you listeners that if your copy of the book does start moving, you should kill it immediately preferably with fire. And now, it's time to get to the story. This is a story about Jackie Fierro, who runs the pawn shop. It is also the story of Diane Creighton, the PTA president at Night Vale High School. It is also the story of the man in the tan jacket. But most of all, this is the story of Welcome to Night Vale. Jackie Fierro is 19. She has been 19 for a very long time. And one day, a man in a tan jacket pawns a strange item, a slip of paper that says only King City on it. The man unsettles her during her encounter, and as hard as she tries, she can't put the piece of paper down. It remains in her hand always. The encounter with the man in the tan jacket has unnerved Jackie and forced her off her usual routine. She goes around town attempting to figure out information about King City or the man in the tan jacket, but is met only with failure and people who can't remember anything about their encounters with him. 
Additionally, she also finds that she cannot remember her childhood, things about her mother that she should know, or just how long she has been 19. Meanwhile, Diane Creighton is going through her own problems. Her teenage son Josh is changing. Change is normal for teenage boys, and more so for Josh, because he is a shapeshifter and can choose his form. But now he is becoming moody, which some people would consider to also be normal for a teenage boy, but for Diane it is worrying. He is also asking more and more about his father, whose name is Troy Walsh, and who has been absent for most of Josh's life, something Diane is 100% okay with. In addition, strange things are happening at work, including a co-worker who wears a tan jacket, mysteriously vanishing and no one remembering that he ever existed. She also begins seeing Troy everywhere she goes, working at several establishments and businesses around Nightvale, including the movie theater, gas station, and the Moonlight All Night Diner. Interspersed throughout the novel are small interludes featuring the voice of Night Vale, Cecil, reporting on various things, frequently pertaining to the story of our heroines. He also includes a warning about strange plastic flamingos that, when touched, apparently send people into alternate dimensions or timelines, or do an inner light thing, as when they return, they're old and die shortly after, if they return at all. As the novel progresses, the stories of Jackie and Diane become more and more entangled, as they search for the answers to their questions, trying to find help from various citizens, including Mayor Dana Cardinal, Old Woman Josie, John Peters, you know, the farmer, and even... Uh, Steve Carlsberg. And now a word from our sponsors. Life is random. The world is full of chaos, and nothing will ever be okay again. But what is okay are Black Scarab Films t-shirts. Ever dreamed of having a logo across your chest that wasn't placed there by a vague yet menacing government agency? Try t-shirts, and try Black Scarab Films t-shirts to have these specific logos across your chest. And they're so soft, and the material is nice, and look at how nice the logo came out on the shirt. They're awesome shirts. This message brought to you by Black Scarab Films. Back to our story already in progress. After their stories intertwine, Jackie discovers that Troy is also her own father, and then is in a car wreck with Josh, who stole his mother's car to try to find Troy in King City. Jackie and Diane head there themselves, finding that the city has been ravaged by something and no longer has a mayor. They go to the mayor's office to find Troy and Josh, and instead find the man in the tan jacket, who it turns out is the mayor of King City. He tells Diane a story about Troy, telling her that Night Vale's strangeness infected King City through him, who wanted to be helpful and can apparently split himself off into several counterparts, like Multiplex from DC Comics or Multiple Man from Marvel. He began helping around town, which at first was nice, but the strangeness began to take its toll, and even when the mayor asked Troy to stop duplicating himself, Troy refused, because he wanted to help. Then, the people of King City found that their memories were damaged, forgetting about things outside their own town, about people who didn't live in the town, and they soon forgot their mayor. The mayor attempted to save his city, even going to Nightvale, where Troy was from, but because no one could remember him after their encounters, he was unable to do anything until he started working at Diane's office and found out about Josh, the son of the man who destroyed his town. The man in the tan jacket removes the slip of paper from Jackie's hand, and tells Jackie that he only gave her the slip in order to give Josh the idea to go to King City, and needs Josh to remain behind so he can learn about Troy's abilities. Diane refuses, and Jackie volunteers to go in his place, since she is also Troy's child, but Diane tells her that neither of them are staying because it's not their fault that Troy did what he did, and it's not their problem. 
They do, however, go to confront Troy, all of him, and tell him that no one needs his help and that he's only helping for himself, and they force all the Troys to return to Nightvale. They settle in the Barista District, and Carlos discovers that in order to get rid of those plastic flamingos, all he has to do is hand one to a Troy, and the flamingo takes each Troy to their own reality, leaving only one Troy remaining in Nightvale, presumably the original. The novel ends at a barbecue where Jackie, Diane, Josh, and Jackie's mother Lucinda discuss their lives and plans. Jackie has finally turned 21, she skipped being 20, because not everyone has to be 20, and Diane comes to terms with Josh's shapeshifting and lets go of him slightly, as Troy watches on from the driveway, having been invited but deciding not to intrude. And now it's time for the Children's Fun Fact Character Corner. While Welcome to Night Vale has a very diverse community filled with people, scientists, dragons, and beings that are not legally allowed to be referred to as angels, we never meet the majority of them on the show. While we have met many of them, including Carlos and Steve Carlsberg, and the people who spoke at the debate and who appear in live shows, we learn about most of their adventures through information given by Cecil as he reports on the town. So this is the first time that we get to see these characters in their natural environment. And while I could go at length about every single character in the novel, I'll just say that the characters that we encounter that have appeared voiced on the show before, like Cecil and Carlos and Old Woman Josie, they act exactly as they have been portrayed in the podcast. This is an easy feat for this tie-in novel, more so than, say, a Star Trek or Doctor Who novel, because the writers of the book also created the podcast and write all the episodes, so they know exactly what they're planning on doing with the characters in the future. The main players, namely Jackie Fierro and Diane Creighton, are also written very well, and their behavior works well up against each other. Especially how Diane is shown, despite being in Night Vale, to be a relatively normal mother, and having normal motherly overprotectiveness that in Night Vale is well warranted. Her hiding of Troy from Josh was less good since it was more for her benefit than Josh's, but the fact that by the end of the novel she not only becomes more well-adjusted to Josh's shape-shifting, and fosters a friendship with Jackie, which according to the beginning of the novel was something that she never really had before. Josh was her life, and now she still has Josh, but now she has Jackie and Lucinda and a new job working at the pawn shop. It's nice to have a mom character whose entire character was centered around her kid, but she breaks free of it thanks in part to telling Troy to screw off and getting closure for her relationship. Jackie is also interesting, and I like how emphasis is put on her being 19 when all of her friends grew older, and how she evolves during the book and eventually comes to grips with becoming older. Not all at once, but gradually. Josh is also a very interesting character, as despite his extra-normal abilities, his story is ultimately human, just wanting to meet his father. The man in the tan jacket is also shown to be a decent character, caring about King City and only wanting to save it from Night Vale's strangeness. I also like how, despite revealing mysteries about the podcast, namely explaining the deal with the man in the tan jacket, the town and its people don't feel any less mysterious than they did before reading it. In fact, a major theme of the novel that the characters encounter is closure. And it's done extremely well, even in a place like Night Vale where time doesn't exactly work correctly. Oh, and I nearly forgot. I want to wish a happy birthday to famous screen actor Lee Marvin, who turned 30 today. Let's have a look at the action. The action is really good. The story progresses in an enjoyable way, and there's lots of suspense, rivaling even the suspense present in the most intense episodes of the podcast, like Sandstorm, Old Oak Doors, and A Story About Love and Horror. I, for one, was on the edge of my seat throughout all of the most intense parts, though I'll say the stuff when they get to King City is even more suspenseful than everything else. 
I really felt for Diane when she was worried about Josh, and for Jackie when she was working through her memory problems. It was very evocative, and the pacing is perfect. I never felt like the story dragged, even when the characters got held up in their storylines. I was actually sort of sad to finish the book, because I wanted to know more. Which is fortunate that the podcast exists, so I do know where everyone goes from there. Overall, the action is done extremely well in this book. It's time for the verdict, but first, the weather. And now, it's time for the verdict. Welcome to Night Vale, a novel, is phenomenal. If I didn't already love Night Vale, I probably wouldn't get it. But because I do understand Night Vale and the premise, I love it even more. And I commend the book for focusing on characters other than Cecil and Carlos and Dana, giving us a nice look at characters who don't get nearly as much focus as they deserve, and who delivered a fantastic story. I wish we'd get to see more about them in the podcast proper, and give a voice 
voice to Jackie Fierro. But as it stands with the book, Fink and Craner delivered a fantastic novel that is simultaneously exactly what I expected from a Night Vale novel and nothing like I expected at all. If you're a fan of the Night Vale podcast, naturally, this is a must-read, and I highly recommend it. If you're not a fan of the podcast and want to get into it, this might not be the best jumping-on point, but if you've absorbed enough information through seeing it on social media and get the entire premise, then I would say that it might work as a jumping-on point. And the best part of me waiting so long to finally getting around to reading this is that the sequel It Devours was released late last year, so I can go start reading it now and don't need to wait. In the meantime, if you'd like to see more of the literary lair, you can hit that subscribe button. And if you have any comments or complaints about the video, you can put those in the comment section below. Oh, and if you want to be notified of new uploads, you can hit that bell icon. And if you enjoyed this video, show it to your friends and share it around the internet. And maybe consider supporting the show on Patreon. See you next time, listeners! See you next time.